What's up Ghana, Africa to the world, and Kivan officials speaking. Charlie, today we did a good way, we can kind of experience farming uh, right here in Uwe. And I have here with me uh, Master David Kotoku. Yeah. Uh, one of my bosses as we did do national service, but now he'll be big my own farm. He get farm. <laughs> What's up? How is farming? How did you start farming actually? Well, and this is just a childhood um, practice. This is what my parents do, so we just inherited it. But it's just that we've modernized it in a way. Initially, it was the world that we use the world to water the course, but now we've modernized it. We're using irrigation farming. I think this one is less stressful than the one to the school. Is it your personal business? Is it something you owe personally? Or? Well, this is a partnership business. Partnership business. I think we are four that have come together to do this. And this is just one aspect of us. We have two other firms. Two other firms? Yeah, around here. What, what is the size of this one? This is about six plots. Six plots? Yeah, six plots of land. You put you make money looking for you. Okay, six plus, what, what do you grow here? Uh, we have carrots, lettuce, then spring onion. Then we have some pepper. That one for the women to visit us. Not for commercial. After national service, you ventured into agriculture, into farming. Well, I think I've been doing this since, since my times in school. Thank you. And I think this has helped us a lot raise money to be our person. Other needs and after national service, definitely uh, you just have to come back and be doing something. But or you'll be looking up for government appointment. Or <laughs> okay, so would you say after national service you've expanded or like would you say you've invested your national service allowance into it? Okay, um, this particular one was done during the national service time. Okay. We're having only the other two foods during the times in school. But when I was uh, doing my national service together with my colleagues, we decided to acquire this land and invest in this one. Well, part of the National Service Allowance was used for this actually, and we had loans from donors, friends, and other corporate bodies. Oh, okay. Okay. This is fine. So, National Service money saved the years one. <laughs> and you, 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 you've done all this, you know. Would you say agriculture is the way for Ghana or Africa? Well, definitely, we can't deny the fact that um, we can grow our economy through agriculture because when you look at the likes like Cote d'Ivoire and other countries are doing very well and it is just through agriculture. So the best thing is just make it attractive for the youths so that the youth can venture into it and also uh, make life very easy for themselves. That's what, what did you study in school? Well, I studied BSc Geological Engineering. I didn't do anything agriculture. So why then agriculture now? Because is it because it be something you you've been doing for long? Well, you know, um, there are times that you need to change the dynamics. Definitely, at this particular part of our land, uh, let me say Ghana or Botswana, it's very difficult to practice the geology or geological engineering that I studied in school. So and you knew that from the very beginning. Oh yeah, definitely. I knew. So why did you go ahead to study that? You know, it's studying something that necessarily means you should uh, go and practice it. At times when the need comes, definitely I have my certificate in that. If I should get any avenue today to do, I will practice my geological engineering. But why should I do that? I'm waiting for that avenue. So I can go to agriculture and raise something for myself. 
I can see you have leadership in you from the very beginning. He was, he was, I say he was my national service president, right? Me then, we feel they get small fights. <laughs> but, but still. This is your dream for the farm specifically of about from five years from now. You see, um, one thing I believe in is you have to do something that to inspire others. You know, definitely, people see us. You see, initially I started that we, we are actually for that invested in it. And um, my elder brother, he said to chat and said, then the one that comes up, he suspects the chat and said, he is in his national service and he had mathematics in school. And the technical brain behind the farm, it's my very good friend Michael. Uh, he read agriculture engineer. So definitely, we have to do something that will inspire society or that will inspire the young ones. Someone will see and say, hey, do. he's a graduate of KNUSC, but he's into farming. Then I can also do farming. Bright is a teacher, an accountant teacher, but he's into farming. Then I can also do farming and do all of those stuff. So definitely, we live lives to inspire others. Okay, so after I'm, ask, I'm still asking this. After five years, where, where do you see yourself from farming in the aspect of farming? Well, we want to expand this farm as as large as we can expand. Definitely get fields at different parts of the country. Invest very well into that because we believe that Ghana can only be very good when we the youths have been inspired and they venture into that. Like, what would you tell a youth? I want to venture into agriculture. Oh, it's cool. Just venture into it. It's a risk taking, actually. It's not all that rosy. Definitely, you are going to face obstacles. But when we started this thing, it was very hectic and difficult. What inspired you personally to do this? What? Definitely. Not the group personally, as an individual. Definitely. Um, someone will say money, but no, no, no. We don't actually concentrate on the money aspect. As I said earlier, you have to. Do something that will inspire me. You know, my role model is John Tumelo, so I look up to John. <laughs> yes, that Another question comes. I'm not an actor, but I look up to John. Everything that John does inspires me very well. Inspires me very well. So, mostly, I know if John is doing very well in my life, which I do, it can also be. So, I just have to take that inspiration. And uh, you, you have a political position in your a area. Do you have a political ambition? <laughs> Definitely, I have a political ambition. That one I will not deny the fact that I don't have an ambition. I have it, but I'll be just taking things step by step. Um, yeah, when the right time comes, then we we'll see, see what. We we'll see where you're going. Like. Yeah. Keep it lucky, don't go anywhere. It's the Hood Vibe Show and keep on official. We're on the farm today, so just keep it locked. My name is Michael Avoy. Okay, so uh, you are the farm technician here. Like you, you, you went to the school for uh, purposely for agriculture. You studied ag agriculture in school, so you have the technical know-how on the farm here. How does things go here? In terms of farming here, you could see like our system here is sprinkler irrigation. What are the irrigation? Spr sprinkler irrigation. Okay. So it's just about like. You drink in your borehole, then the water comes from the underground. From there, then connect pipe underground. So that's the better pipe than the sprinkler. So the first, that one, the one that is connected to the sprinkler, that's the riser. And then the riser will have the main line, that's the lateral line. So the from the, that's the machine, which is powered by electricity. So from there, it connect the water from the machine then to the the, 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 the riser. So from the riser, the sprinkler picks it. So that's the system of the farm we are doing here. Okay. You use a uh, sprink, what sprinkler. sprinkler? Okay. You are farming. You are doing lettuce and uh, uh, pepper, carrot, and what else? That's all. I think some small onion. Uh, too. Yeah, spring onion. Spring onion. Some, some people call it bunch onion. Okay, so but you you know that uh, what is its name? Bunch onion. Bunch onion. Yes. Okay. So those of you those of you call it spring onion is bunch onion. <laughs> it's only the leaves that, that is used. For okay, only the leaves. Yes. Before uh, planting or uh, uh, 
starting uh, to farm this how do, how do how is the process like i can see nursing over there you nurse it tell us take, take us to the process of farming this okay before you do the nursing you prepare let's say you till the land then you rake it to remove those uh, weeds from the bed so but from there you use wool to divide it you can, you can see it there yeah. after that you water it it can be like five days or like it depends the number of, the number of days you want to use and how you water it, it depends on you. So for, for our own, we use like three days. We water the bed, the empty bed, three days. From there, then we nest the seed. That seed you are looking is like that's 100 grams. 100 grams. Yes. So we just nest it. After nesting it, you cover it with straw. We can even be like palm front or anything. Okay. Then after covering it, you water it. Like for lettuce, the seed it start to germinate from third day to the fourth day. Then all, all of it to germinate so that's the next one okay so how old is that one now getting to two weeks two weeks by, by three weeks it will be ready for transplanting okay so after a week you will be transplanting that yes after a week we'll be doing it you can see that we are preparing this place for, for that. transplanting okay so those ones will come to this side yes okay what of carrot for carrot there we don't need it but some people do. We have diff different variety. But the one we are having here is bosses, which is in a tacky seed. So from there, you just plant it straight. First, you prepare the bed. Sometimes you can use like oh, organic manure, like here yeah, we call it kokulumi, but it's foul manure. So from our chicken manure. So you apply it, then you water it for like about four days to five days, then they will come and plant it, then you continue to water it about six days to seven days, then it will germinate. Okay. As somebody who went to school to study this, like technical know how, comparing the chemicals we use for farming and the organic uh, 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 manures we use, which one is the best to be used? Hmm. If you say the best, it depends what you want. Okay. Here, look at the nature of our soil. It cannot depend solely on organic. Okay. So you have to add an inorganic to it. So here we say mixture of organic and inorganic. We use fowl, like fowl, manure and cow manure. And also the organic. Sometimes that's the foliar too, it's also inorganic. But sometimes the some foliars are also organic. Okay. Uh, the lettuce, uh, hey, I've forgotten the name again. What's the name? Yes, Bancho. Bancho, yeah. How How is that one? Like? What is the process like? That one is propagated by seed and also the bulb. Okay. Sometimes, sometimes people nest it. We have a seed for it. Maybe you might not see the seed before. Yeah. But when you look at that, when you harvest it, you remain some to transplant again. Okay. So that's the the bulb I'm talking about, it's also like this, the onion, the shallot. Okay. Yes. We just use the bulb to transplant it again. Okay. Which school did you come to? Oh, what thing university? Okay. So you did agri there? Agriculture in there. Agriculture in there. Yes. One year? For well, three years, doing the top up for two years. Okay, so you now have uh, your degree holder in agriculture. Yes. Is farming one of the things you have passion for? Course, seriously so you all um my dream my dream is to become a professional farmer, a professional farmer. which you've already started yes five years from now where do you see yourself five years from now i see myself having a large farm about 10 acres of land more than that producing maize in terms of cereals sweet potato and so on to feed our people as a young guy farming what would you tell a fellow young guy who wants to go into farming farming is one of lucrative job you need like you need some small amount to start but company construction our own here is very expensive because buying the pvc pipe sprinklers machine getting the like electricity is very expensive so doing farming here is very expensive but when you compare to other places it's less but what would you tell someone who wants to go into farming? What? Is, it, is it something that you do? Oh, 
advice. Yes, I will advise someone to go, but you have to have passion for it. It's not something like you come in the morning and go, and go and start. to then the next day or one week, then you come back to look at it. No, family is just like something you have to be in it two for seven. Have time for it. Okay, so we've been talking to uh, the farm that the one who have the technical know-how here and uh, he has been telling us how uh, things go on here i lent you you are you are four of you in this particular yes two are currently in school right now and one, you, one is four and then the other one two is sabrites so they're also teachers okay. they're all teachers. They teachers and you guys are the one you you just finished your national service yeah. about a year ago would you say your national service allowance was part of the investment here Yes, I may see. So you, you, you know, during your service time, our money are not becoming early. So sometimes you need some money to, from some of your parents, guardians, or friends to help you before the allowance come down. You use it. And when we start this this side, you have another format, the other side. But this one is not up, it's all a year now. We started last year, December. So we are in January. So one year, one month. So from here, like, we use about, let's say, getting to twenty thousand to start this place. Twenty thousand Ghana yes. cedis to start this part to start this particular farm. Twenty thousand. So, so no. and the farm is a year old. Yes. Do you, would you say you've recovered your twenty thousand yet? Mm, not really. You know, mm-hmm. you cannot pay all at once. Okay. So you yourself, you you'll be eating. You know, we are. Mm-hmm. I don't play right now. We are doing something for a living. So you two will be ready. Yeah, but but have you rec- from the farm? Have you recovered your uh, 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 twenty thousand uh, Ghana cities? Did your farm the product you've been selling? Have you sold any? Have you harvested before? Oh, we harvested tomatoes, mm-hmm. carrots, lettuce, spring onion. So have that? Have those products uh, or farm product? amount to the twenty thousand yet or they are yet to do that they are more they are more than that but looking at the expenses and things and some of us from it and some of us sometimes we share some things to take care of ourselves so, so you are still so that you've not gotten your capital still yet um, for the capital we've gotten half okay so yeah, you pay half already so left is half to to go to go how how long will it take you to recover the rest of the half? what do you think you see that carrot right now Depending the the price, the market. Mm. If it's okay, we'll pay the the remaining half. Okay. Okay. Thanks for talking to us, and um, we are still on the farm. Don't go anywhere. Keep subscribing. Hit the post notification bell and be notified. Today with the experienced farm, and we are here. So keep it locked. Okay, so what are the, some of the challenges you face on the farm? Well, our main challenge here is market. It's, you know, we don't have ready markets for the products, and mostly when the middlemen come down here to buy the products, at times um, they detect the prices for the people that are farming. Okay. Yeah, because there's no one regulating the system, so. They come down here and detect the prices, which shouldn't be like that. I think it should, if there should be a system 
that will determine the price from the top it would have been perfect probably the municipal assembly or the district can be regulating the prices then when the middlemen are coming they know that this is what they are coming to, fixed to get and this is the fixed price that is it and secondly to is how expensive fertilizer is and not only the fertilizer the farm uh, the, the seeds and everything the prices of them has gone up like tremendously you know before we started the farm, we bought a pipe at 42 cities. That was in December 2021. But now it's 95 cities. So you 95 can. 95 cities each. So definitely you should know that things are not normal going forward. And also the prices of fertilizer, both the organic and inorganic one, the prices have just tre tremendously gone up, which is a very huge challenge to a young man entering into agriculture. And also the machine, you know, we need sponsorships, you know, this kind of things. We are actually helping the government grow the economy in a way. And definitely there should be some kind of stipends from the district assembly and corporate bodies and NGOs, then we can move forward. Okay, those are some of the um, challenges as well as the disadvantages of farming. Now tell us some of the uh, advantages and let's say achievements of farming. Well, one advantage, I think, or the achievement we've chalked is we've, we've been able to employ some people. The guy, the, he's, he's a student and fully we pay his school fees, anything about his school. It's we that do it. It's chalk money to everything, probably maybe getting admission to secondary school, any technical institution. Definitely, we are going to also pay all those things. So, virtually everything about him is our concern. And also, there are people that we employ part time, they come and do part time jobs. And so, in the last year, we've also provided avenue to uh, job avenue to the youths in the society. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, hit the post notification bell, and be notified anytime we release a video. Peace out.